hello everyone welcome back this video needs no long intro as you all have already seen it's a q and a get to know me tag but for the sake of those who are tuning in for the first time i'd love to give them a warm welcome hi my name is chantal jila and i welcome you to shanti bloom here i share applicable principles and simple practical steps that will help you and guide you on that path to finding your purpose and pursuing it with more clarity and balance so that you can move away from that place of constantly feeling stuck not sure what to do with your life over to where you can bloom and flourish in your everyday life and doing so god's way so if that's something that you want then please consider subscribing to the channel now that you know what this channel is all about, let's get into a few questions that will help you know a little bit more about me. Now, if this was my very first video, I probably would have just gone to the internet and pulled off some questions, but because I'm doing this way, 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 way into my YouTube journey, and I already have this beautiful community out here, I decided to ask you to send in the questions. So thank you all so much for sending in these interesting questions. And um, if this video gets too long, blame it on you and not on me, because I'm going to be answering every single question. Yes, I, I did group some of the questions that were kind of similar but i'm answering every single question so let's get into it okay first question where are you from and what do you like about your country i am from cameroon in central africa and uh, our neighboring countries are nigeria chad congo gabon equatorial guinea and the atlantic ocean yes i crossed the atlantic ocean and relocated to the u.s something i love about my country is our food oh my goodness we have so many dishes and they are so so delicious i love our food i also love our cameroonian attire you know our fashion designers have made it such that if you're looking for something that is originally traditional traditional you will always find something beautiful and gorgeous to put on and if you're looking for something that incorporates other styles and fashions from other parts of the world you will equally still find something you know maybe to dress up or to dress down and why not you know the world is becoming a small place if you want to try out styles and fashions from different parts of the world while still using your fabric it's a win-win and I'm always looking forward to the summer you know to put when it's warmer so I can put on my uh, Cameroonian outfits next question how many languages do you speak I would say I speak three languages <laughs> one official language and two unofficial languages the official language I speak is English and then I also speak this language called Limbo right Cameroon has so many tribes and these tribes have their different dialects mine is called Limbo you know <laughs> my husband and I used to use or speak in Limbo whenever we are discussing something that we do not want the kids to hear and then my mom and my mother-in-law be like teach them the language stop using it as a coded language teach them the language <laughs> and so we were like okay okay then the third language that i speak is pidgin it's like a, a broken english or let me say the common street english um i love pidgin because when you want to have a good conversation with a friend you keep english aside and you speak in pidgin you know some story the way in any answer when you talk about english right you go for talk and for pidgin so that you hear the wait for the story and if when you add country talk on top it takes to another level so <laughs> pidgin has its place and it's one of the languages that i speak okay next one what do you like about yourself when i saw this question i was like this is not a good question for somebody like me because i tend to be very critical about myself but i'm learning that it's important to acknowledge your weaknesses and also important to identify your strengths and to embrace it so if there's something i would say i like about myself is my ability to give people the benefit of doubt my ability to give people second chances it helps me to respond to situation rather than react to them but I emphasize on the responding aspect because if you are somebody who gives people a second chance benefit of doubt they may turn to take you for granted if you do not respond to things you know which means I take my time I observe I analyze you know I can notice something that you may not realize that I've noticed you know I hear I see things that you may not realize that I have heard and seen them but this only helps me to respond from an informed place you know more facts and less assumptions unlike in the case of uh, reacting 
Am I saying that I've never reacted in a situation? Oh yes, I have, and a lot. <laughs> Am I saying that I've never done something out of mere assumptions? I have, and a lot. But for the most part, I have learned to give people a benefit of doubt, to give people second chances, to respond to things rather than react to them. And sometimes it's not necessarily for the other party, it's for me and to guard my own heart. Okay, let's look at the next. What physical thing are you afraid of? I am afraid of bugs and crawling things. You know, especially if it is strange, you know, a strange one that I've not seen before and it's sizable. Mm -mm, you know, I have all these goosebumps around me. Time will fail me to share with you some of my funny bug encounter stories. There are so many of them and they are hilarious. Sometimes my husband just rolls his eyes like, <laughs> you are not different from the kids. So... I don't like bugs. All right, the next one is, are you married? If yes, what's your favorite thing to do as a family? Now, I found the first part of this question a little bit strange because I assume that anybody who has been watching me here on YouTube or following me on social media knows that I am happily married to my husband, Edwin, and we have been blessed with three beautiful children. Now, what is it that we love to do as a family? You know, we are your regular everyday family, okay? We do not have crazy adventurous things that we do on a regular basis once in a while yes but on a regular basis i think what we do is that we have friday saturday movie nights as a family we love board games card games as a family we also love to and sometimes to just spice up the games we can choose to take it outdoors instead of keeping it indoors and if the warm if the weather is equally warm we t love to take walks and to the park anything that is kid friendly another thing is um sketching my kids love to sketch and my husband and i we grew up also loving to draw things so once in a while we're going to we join in i would like to ask you all this when it comes to movies at times when you get come together with your friends or family to watch a movie do you all have this problem where you can spend almost 30 minutes to an hour still trying to figure out what to watch or maybe you each person has something they want that you should watch and there's this back and forth you know please if you face that problem let me know in the comment section below but we've come up with a solution to that and we've told ourselves you know before weekend we have the whole week to brainstorm to do all the back and forth so that when the time comes i don't want to sit down with my cup of popcorn and it gets all spongy because i'm trying to figure out what to watch so that's mostly what we do as a family at times it's me and the kids other times it's my husband and the kids and again sometimes it's all of us depending on our availability a few more to go what three core values do you live by i really smile when i saw this question because it's a deep one and for me it's seek justice love mercy and walk humbly with god you know if we're going to love others as we love ourselves the way we have been commanded to do if we're going to live justly and fairly with one another then we would have to understand the grace and mercy of God. There is no way that you can extend grace and mercy to somebody else if you have not grabbed a hold of grace and mercy for yourself. You know, I think over the years I've grown in how much grace and mercy I extend to others because I have equally grown and my eyes have opened up to see how much of God's grace and mercy I am consuming every day. He says what? Well, <laughs> they are new every morning and I am consuming it. So the more I see God's grace and mercy in my life, it really just humbles me, you know, it makes me really meek in my heart. And I, I, I kind of not struggle to be humble before him. And we know that the Bible says that he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So I've equally realized that the, 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 the more I put pride aside and I humble my heart, I just experience more and more of God's grace and mercy in my life. And the more of his grace that I, I, I experience, the easier it is for me to extend that same grace and mercy to others. I have so many other core values that I live by, but if I were to bring them all together, one way or the other, they will fall under these three categories. So seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. Now, this is another interesting question. If you had to live your life over again, what is the one thing you would definitely change and the one thing you would not change? This is tricky because you know, a lot of our past experiences or all of our experiences is actually what makes us who we are today. So it can be tricky to go back and say, this is the one thing I would want to change. You know, there's this song by Mercy Me. He says, he's addressing his younger self and he's like, dear younger me, what do I say? Do I give you some 
long speech on what you should do not do the choices you should make and not make because these choices are what made me me so dear younger me what do i say you know i'm just paraphrasing it's not that's not the exact lyrics you can check the song out it's a beautiful song but if there's one thing that uh comes to mind for me often is um the need to be understood i had this need to be understood not to be loved or accepted um i grew up in a fairly healthy environment so, so love and acceptance was not really an issue for me those who know me would know that i i was a confident person but i had this thing of i don't mind if you agree or disagree with me but please understand me understand me like understand me and that need to be understood also leaves you with the fear of being misunderstood and that fear prevented me or held me back in so many ways so i had this fear that if i was misunderstood then i'll be judged based on that misunderstanding and that would be unfair but i love this quote by ann lander she says that at age 20 we worry about what others think of us then at age 40 we don't care what others think of us at age 60 we realize that nobody has been thinking of us right people have been busy thinking about their lives we live in a time now that people are just so self-centered they're busy with their lives you know how many of you woke up this morning and from nowhere just started thinking about opera because she's she's popular how many of you woke up today even as you're scrolling down on social media how many of you just start thinking about mark zuckerberg so people could even be using your product and you're the last thing that comes on their mind people are busy so stop being afraid of misunderstanding stop being afraid of conflicts and confrontations stop being afraid of what somebody would say and think you know stop letting it hold you back from stepping into something that you want to do because you know people all oh, they're, they're busy with their lives and even if they were not even if they were thinking and saying something who cares and uh, even though the who cares i'm talking about should not be with arrogance you're not going to be so arrogant like i don't care i don't care i don't care because honestly there are some things you should care about there are certain things in relationships and friendships that you should care about and should you should think about it and see what you're going to do differently but for the most part trust me there are other things that you should really not care about and maybe you think people care about they don't care about it either and even if they do who cares <laughs> So if there is one thing that I would go back and change is that unnecessary need to always be understood. There are some people who have already made up their minds, first of all, not to ever understand you, no matter how much you try to be understood. And there are some people who just don't understand just because they just don't understand. Now for something in my life that I would not want to change, that would be me receiving salvation. You know, being a follower of Jesus Christ, that I would not want to change. You know, even right now on some tough days, I just wake up and I'm like, God, how do people do it without God? You know, because I just need him, need him. And it's not even something I can take credit for or to say I can go back and change or not change because uh, many times we say, I gave my life to Christ, I gave my life to Christ. In the real sense of it, he drew our hearts to himself. So I'm just so grateful to God that he drew my heart to him so early and has kept me all these years if i'm still standing it's by the grace of god it's because he has kept me and like i said he it's, it's in him that i live i move i have my being so why would i want to change that and i'm happy that i can't even change it because he has said nothing nothing can separate me from his love okay we're almost there somebody says what do you do to relax i take deep breaths <laughs> Deep breaths help me to relax, you know, like instantly. Another thing that I love to do, that's one of my biggest go-to to relax, is to just lay down and listen to music. Um, I love singing and listening to music. The singing is a hobby part of it. The listening is a relaxing part of it, you know, and uh, I... In fact, somebody asked me also what my favorite song was and I was like, it's difficult for me to pick a favorite song because I'm somebody that I love. I love to listen to a lot of songs, you know, if the lyrics is right, the melody is good. I don't care where it's coming from, Africa, Asia, Europe, America, it's going to make it to, you know, my playlist. So um, I can tell you maybe um, what I've been listening to this week or something that's currently on my lips. That would be Yes, He Can by Kane beautiful song if he moved the mountains then he still can i've been listening to that and it's really building on my faith for some things i'm trusting God for um till i found you by phil wickham you are great by steve crowns those are some songs that i have given everybody in my house an earworm with this week i also like to um watch a 
you know a chilled out movie to relax not a very serious movie when i want to relax i just want something easy going to just laugh and then something um i'm also wanting to do a little bit more is to just take baths they have a way of just relaxing you when you sit in there and not think about anything you really get relaxed last but one something people may be surprised to know about you when i saw this i'm like can we really surprise people nowadays <laughs> there's nothing left to surprise anybody with right we've seen it all heard it all um, so instead of saying that something you would be surprised i would rather say um maybe something you may not know about me is that um i easily cry i easily get teary if i'm happy if i'm sad i'm watching a movie oh my god <laughs> my husband is always like yes those tears are always just there ready to flow <laughs> so um but i don't know there is this um other stronger part of me that is always wanting to say be strong for everybody else so i tend to kind of always want to hold things in but those who are really close to me know that <laughs> So yes, that is something maybe you may not know about me, but that's nothing surprising. Now, before I conclude with one of the most interesting questions that I was asked, I would like to uh, say here that there are about four questions that I've not answered in this video. Please do not say, oh, she did not answer my question. The reason why I've not answered it here is because I'm transferring it to some videos that I already plan to make you know they kind of align with some videos that i plan to make so i thought why make this video so lengthy when i can actually move it over there and answer your questions you know so those questions are when were you saved and what does being a christ follower mean to you a good number of people ask me this and i already have plans to share my salvation testimony around the easter time so and it's not far from now so look forward to that the other one is how did you discover your purpose again i've been talking about purpose clarity balance and i really want to make videos to share to explain more on what i mean by those uh things so i'm going to be taking you through my own journey in a separate video um you have very great educating video topics how and where do you get inspiration yeah that's something i also really want to share with you all how i get my inspiration how i come about with the videos that i put out here i believe it's going to help somebody not necessarily someone who is on youtube but just to see how where your life your experiences where it has its place in your purpose and how it can be helpful to others so i'm going to make a video on that you are a nurse a mom wife youtuber and i believe you may have other roles in life how do you maintain balance i had so many questions on this aspect of balance and um, some people asked it in very fun ways but i chose to just pick this one person's one because they kind of elaborated on it some people believe that balance is a myth and that's and it's because of the way that they define it they think it's being perfect this state of tranquility quiet as a lake you know and so when it's unattainable then they feel like it's a myth so i'd love to make a video on that and share my perspective and also share with you what i am doing you know to try to maintain some level of balance in my own life so let me conclude with this beautiful question what would you like to accomplish in your life when all is said and done yes thank you for this beautiful question when all has been said and done which means there's a lot to say there's a lot to do there's a lot i want to say and share from my heart to help people to live lives that matter lives that make them feel fulfilled there's a lot i want to do also to help people in this area and there's also a lot of other things that are just my personal ambitions things that i want to do to achieve for myself for my family so but when all of this has been said when all of this has been done what would be my greatest accomplishment it would be to come to that place where i believe that i will hear well done thou good and faithful servant don Moan sings the song that i really love when it's all been said and done he says when it's all been said and done um there'll be one thing that matters did i do my best to live for truth did i live my life for you when it's all been said and done only what i did for love's reward will stand the test of time you know listen to that song and the lyrics is such a beautiful song i say this because everybody kind of any everybody pursuing purpose always has some level of restlessness within and i think it's just something that is trying to push you to let it all out pour it all out there's more in there and i think that when you come to that place where you have poured it all out 
somewhere it begins to settle in on you because paul was able to say i fought the fight i've run the race jesus was able to say it's finished if you go into the old testament there were people who were able to throw the mantle over because they knew they were done so i think that there is that place where you can come where you feel like hmm, i think i fought a good fight and i think i'm going to be able to hear well done thou good and faithful servant you know being in that space for me will be the greatest accomplishment to be in that kind of place you know when you talk with people who have run the race and they're in that place you see a different kind of glow and peace in them you know so for me that is a very big accomplishment so that's it for today i hope i was able to keep this video interesting and answering all your questions the way you expected me to but i know that as we keep going on this journey to bloom and flourish in our everyday life you will get to know me more and more one video at a time thank you all so much for watching and see you in the next